And really, it's something that you hear a lot in marketing, which is like 80% of your customers or of your results come from 20% of your efforts, right? So I want to be able to know what that 20% is for my business and what where I should kind of double down on. Like, what are my winners? What are my best blog posts? What are my What's my best content? And be able to do more of that, right? So almost all of my sales for my business come in through email. Um, I use ConvertKit to send my sales campaigns, my drip campaigns, my evergreen campaigns. And these are the things that really drive revenue for me. Um, but I've had a problem with ConvertKit and basically every email marketing service that I've used where I'm not totally sure where leads come in from. Um, so here are all my old forms. Um, I was basically creating new forms whenever I needed whenever I needed them. So I have stuff for like Black Friday. I have like a random hiring form that I had um, here. I have yeah portfolio teardown channel. These are just like randomly named things that I was, some of them I was even sending like existing subscribers. So, so it's, it can, it's easy to kind of paint the picture here of like why this was hard for me to kind of relate back to, okay, when I had a question like which of my blog posts actually are driving subscriptions. I, I didn't know, right? And so on my website, there's actually really only a couple of opt-in forms. Um, on my homepage, this is my homepage, I have this button here and this, you can enter it here. This is where a good bulk of my, my opt-ins come from here on the homepage. Then on a blog post like this, there's this uh, convert box opt-in pop-up that I have. And then at the end of my blog post, I have this here as well. Um, lastly, if I, tr if I try to exit the page, if I have a little exit intent that pops up, which just looks like this is also done in convert box. So those are the main areas that I want to be able to keep track of for my website to be able to see, okay, so which of these is most, um, is better at converting and then following that through all the way down to like, okay, out of everybody who signed up for my program, for my product, did a significant percentage of them come from one of these either forms or even one of the, a specific blog post. So if, um, if a blog post on my website, um, is, is responsible for a high, a significant portion of customers, you know, I want to be able to know that. And really, it's something that you hear a lot in marketing, which is like 80% of your customers or of your results come from 20% of your efforts, right? So I want to be able to know what that 20% is for my business and what, where I should kind of double down on, like, what are my winners? What are my best blog posts? What are my, what's my best content? And be able to do more of that, right? And so ConvertBox actually does tell me a little bit here. This is uh, the back end for that. So here are the two... Um, opt-in boxes, which I showed you on the site, which is the exit intent and the pop-up on the bottom left. And so they provide stats here, um, basically a little bit of a, a little conversion rate, lead conversion. So it's a, it, the exit intent is opting in at 1.8%. So that tells me a little bit. So prior to this, all of these convert box forms were just adding to the same form in ConvertKit. And so what I ended up doing was I archived all of my forms uh, which I showed you here. These are these are all the old forms I had, and I created new forms specifically for each of these specific places that I uh, am am getting leads. So let me walk through kind of what that looks like. So I developed a little naming convention for myself, um, which you can see here in the new forms I created, which is inside these brackets I I put like where I can where this form lives the next thing I, I include is like the location of that form and where it presents itself. And the last portion here is the the appeal. So at what offer am I sort of making with this form? And so I, instead of having, you know, all these different intermingled appeals and different intermingled forms, all, all, all basically pointing to one form, this way I'm able to track it a little bit better now to where in the last week, I can see, oh, my blog exit intent, which only has 1% is what ConvertBox says, but it's actually converting the same number of opt-ins um, as my homepage. 
So I wouldn't really have known that before because I just had everything in a big mess. Um, and now I'm able to kind of tell that. And so a, a quick look at my forms, I can easily, you know, identify what I'm talking about here because of the format for the name. So this is, uh, I have ConvertBox, I have WordPress embedded as another type of um, like, like uh, where it lives sort of uh, idea. And then I have WordPress embedded. I have one that's called integration RS RCP. So that's when Restrict Content Pro, which is a plugin I use, adds people to ConvertKit automatically because of a per product purchase. Um, and so I have that in here where that's not gonna throw off my, my stats. So I can come here and now I do have at least somewhat of an idea of like, these have all been running for the same amount of time. I can understand um, where the bulk of my signups are coming from, which is a little bit of extra clarity I didn't have. Um, but I do want to eventually stop using this page completely because um, as you can see here, the visitor data isn't, and the conversion data isn't accurate. So I'd like to eventually get, uh, create something like a Google sheet to track all of that, which I'll show you kind of a blueprint I'm working on right now. And so I just walked through how I did that in ConvertBox, which is super straightforward. You just basically click, click your integration, you tell it to perform an action, add to form, and it adds and pick the, the ConvertBox form that you create for it. Now I'm gonna walk you through how I did it with um, the other forms on my site, which are at, like one's the bottom of the blog post CTA and my homepage CTA, which those are actually, I'm actually taking the form embed code, which you can get from ConvertKit right here, um, this HTML code, and I'm actually embedding that into the front end of my website. So that was a slightly different process, but I'll walk you through real quick what I, how I did to set that up. So here's my form that I uh, from ConvertKit that I dropped in here. I actually removed a bunch of the junky code that ConvertKit gives you because it kind of slows down your site. Um, so basically this is a Word, WordPress template um, and in here is where I dropped it in. So directly into my front end. And if you look here, the basically the two things you need to change for each form is the this uh, URL number. So I think it's called basically their their uh, ID, the form ID. Um, yeah. So this this number you pull it from here and you put it in, into into here. And the other thing you need is the data UID. So for each form that's on your site, you're gonna to want to pull the, that stuff over. This will allow you to drop the form code into different areas of your site and have the data go to the right place. So if somebody signs up for, for your blog post form, it'll, it'll um, go to the appropriate form here. So once I had that all set up here in ConvertKit, this is what it looks like. Uh, the data was pretty much right, right on. And so now I have a better sense of that. But I also wanted to add a second tracking system. So, so this tracks basically what, uh, which forms and which locations on my site are getting me the most um, subscribers. But for specific blog posts, this doesn't tell me still which which pages people are signing up from, right? And so the way I fix that, which is actually quite simple in ConvertBox, a lot a lot easier in ConvertBox than on the WordPress embed. But I'll, I'll walk through both. Um, you go to form settings here, you create a hidden text field, uh, you do next there, and then you name it f the field name. What I did was I mirrored that naming convention that I have for my forms, So and then added the word sign up page. So so for this uh, convert uh, box form, the name of it was convert box exit intent pop up, uh, and then I added sign up page. And then convert box you, uh, lets you pre-fill the field with the sign up page URL. So ConvertBox will just automatically add that into the subscriber um, when they when they sign up. And so ba basically, here's what that looks like in ConvertKit. Um, it'll ha they'll have a custom field uh, named the the name of the form and the sign up page, and it'll automatically pass it in there um, for you. So that's really really neat about ConvertBox is you don't have to do any any coding. Um, it'll do that, and I did that for all of my ConvertBox forms. So what I did with my um, in my front end WordPress em embeds, where I'm actually embedding the ConvertKit form, um, was I wrote um, this WordPress 
uh, code, which I didn't actually write, but I, I copied and pasted this WordPress code, which basically tells WordPress to go and grab the URL um, and put it into this convert uh, current dash URL thingy. I don't know what, what PHP calls it. And then I, I basically did, I basically did recreated the same stuff by, by hand, which is here. The, I created a hidden input field. Um, you have to, you have to name the name, um, fields and then inside brackets, the name of the field that you want. So similar to the last one, I just kind of copied my form, um, naming conventions here, embedded blog post CTA sign up page. And then for vet, and then I made it value. And then that's when I did the echo current URL. So this basically tells it to go grab the URL. And then this part basically just inserts it in as a value. So when you go to the actual page, um, when you, when you go to an actual blog post, you don't, you won't see anything there. Um, but it, it'll be getting inserted. Um, it'll be getting inserted uh, as a hidden field. So if you go in here and you look at actually the source code, it should be here in the form. So see the value here is getting imp imp imported as, as the URL. Um, but, but to the actual person, they don't see anything here. So, so that's kind of how I'm tracking both. Um, the next step for me is to have this data, not just have the data, which I'm, I'm happy I'm collecting now at least, but it's still not quite usable because ConvertKit doesn't do a great job of showing you usable data basically in, in any, any place. Um, and so I'd like to eventually get to a place where, um, Zapier talks, uh, a convert kit sends that data into Zapier and then Zapier creates, um, new columns in this, something like this, a spreadsheet, um, in Google that will allow me to see, um, you know, forms, sign up page, uh, and, and customer data. And so what I want is for it to be basically show me, show me this, um, my data by sign up page. So how much traffic is it getting? How many leads has it converted? That way I can, I can compare like opt-in rates across, across what blog posts I have. Right. And then also add in customer data. So, um, yeah, this is how I would check and see, oh, this certain blog post is getting me is, has resulted in this much revenue, right? That's the end game. That's where I'm trying to get to. And so I'm currently collecting the data. I'm not currently actually putting it into a spreadsheet like this, but my plan is to use Zapier. When I do that, maybe I'll create a new video and kind of walk through how that works. But basically what Zapier will do is when, when a new subscriber uh, fills out a form, it'll add a new row into the spreadsheet as the customer. It'll give it, it'll pass along kind of the sign up page URL that, that as, that's a custom field that I just walked through how to set up. And then th all of this stuff will kind of automatically update based on that information. Uh, that's going to be part two. Um, but yeah, for now, at least I'm collecting the data that's got me, gotten me a lot further than, um, than I did, than I was before. So this is going to give me some clarity about at least which forms and which pages are getting the most opt-ins for me, which is, which is huge for me. So I thought I'd share, um, I know this might, might actually not even be the best way to do it. I'm not like some expert at, you know, data and stuff. So if there's a better way, let me know, but I didn't find a lot of content on how to set this up. Um, when I, when I searched for it. So I thought I'd share what I've done.